You know, this person's number should have been retired by the Edmonton owners years ago, but uh, better uh, late than never. Kevin Lowe has done so much for hockey, for the Oilers, for Team Canada, a great representative for hockey uh, across not only uh, Canada, but the U.S. worldwide. Uh, inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2020. We're going to look at a little bit of Benavie's background as a Francophone athlete playing in the queue, which led to the NHL, which led to uh, a dynamite career on every level. Now, born in Le Chute, Quebec, uh, first came to major problems with the Quebec Rampar of the QMJHL. His best season was his draft year in 1979. He had uh, 26 goals and 60 assists for 86 points <coughs> in, in 68 games, which eventually led him to be drafted 21st overall. That was a steal in the 79 entry draft. Now, this was, of course, the first draft uh, before uh, Edmonton joined the <coughs> NHL. Now, he was a QMJHL All-Star second team in 78 and 79 for the Rampar, and he was their captain in 79. Now, he was ranked in the Hockey News Drive preview issue as a number 12, number 12 prospect among players born in 1959 for the 79 NHL draft. He was also the first English-speaking player for named Quebec's captain. Now, he debuted on October 10th, 79, and in his years with uh, the Rangers at Edmonton, of course, he won the spectacular number four. He won five cups at Edmonton and won with the Rangers. Now, when he retired in 1998, he had 1,254 games, 84 goals, 247 assists for 421 points and 1,498 minutes in penalties. In the playoffs, 214 games, one of the highest playoff totals of all time. 58 points, including 10 goals and 192 minutes in penalties. Now, uh, from the moment he hit the ice, there was nothing but success. He won the Clancy Trophy in 1990 for Edmonton for service. He was the Bud Man of the Year for the NHL in 1990. Made the All-Star Game 84, 85, 86, 88, 89, 90 in Edmonton, and also 93 with the Rangers. Now, Stanley Cup Finals, he lost in 83 as a player with Edmonton, and 2006 with Edmonton as their GM. He was Edmonton's Defenseman of the Year in 82, 87, 88. The Edmonton Community Service Award winner in 89, 92. New York Rangers Good Guy Award in 95. Edmonton Captain from October 4th, 91 till December 20th, 92. Now, he holds the Edmonton records for most career games played. 1037. Most career playoff games were 172. Most career games combined, 1209. Now, with Edmonton, he was the assistant coach for the 98-99 season, and he was named head coach on June 1899 and remained there for the season. Now, he was named Edmonton executive vice president, altered the governor GM on June 9, 2000, and held that possession through 2007. Now, what was ironic, he scored a goal in his first NHL game, which was also the first goal in game in the history of the Edmonton Oilers franchise, and also the first game in Gretzky's NHL career. The goal came on the power play at 9.49 of the first against Tony Esposito, with Brett Callaghan and Gretzky assisting on the goal. The assist was also Gretzky's first point in the NHL. Now, he set Edmonton single game record since broken for points and assists by a defenseman during Edmonton's February 1993 game, 83 game at Pittsburgh with a goal and five helpers. He set the Edmonton record since broken for most consecutive games played for 20 between January 24 and 81 to March 9th, 86. Now what happened? Uh, the streak was uh, broken, no pun intended, when he missed part of the 86 season with a broken index finger in a game suffered against L.A. Now, it was Dame Edmonton's alternate captain on March 6, 87, replacing Lee Foglin after Foglin was sent back to Buffalo. He remained in that position until Mercy was traded to the Rangers on October 4, 91. Now, he was Edmonton's nominee for the Masters and Trophy. Now, he led Campbell Conference defenseman in voting for the 88 and 89 NHL All-Star Games. Now, he also missed part of the uh, 88th season with a broken bone in his left wrist, like he had really bad problems with his hands. Now, he eventually became Edmonton's all-time leader in games played when he broke Gretzky's record by playing in the 697 contests uh, November 1988 in New Jersey. He also was the Masters and Trophy nominee for Edmonton for 89 and 90. Now, 
He was the first player in NHL history to win the King Clancy Memorial Trophy and be named Bud NHL Man of the Year in the same season, a feat he achieved in 1990. Now, uh, injuries really uh, uh, were hampered his career. He had problems with his right ankle, uh, bruised back, strained rotator cuff, uh, all kind of different stuff, groin injuries. Now, he was also very active as well with the NHLPA, as a lot of people know. He was Edmonton's representative between 83 and 92. Now, this is where it got controversial. He became a restricted free agent after the 92 season, but refused to accept Edmonton's low-bound contract offer of 600000 per year over two years, instead of holding out and waiting until a team could have orchestrated a trade. Now, he was hoping to be dealt to Montreal to come back to Quebec, but he was disappointed when when Edmonton traded him to the Rangers, and he took six more days before signing with his new team. Now, the injuries followed in New York with a, a stiff neck, uh, problems with the flu and uh, with his back as well. Now, what was kind of kind of weird? He kind of had a bad temper as well. He was suspended for three 93 preseason games and five 500 by the NHL <coughs> for a high sticking incident during the Rangers September 27th preseason game versus the Islanders. Now injuries that uh, continue in 94: bruised right foot, bruised thigh, problem with the flu, back injury. Uh, and uh, which really hampered his 93-94 season. Now, he missed the end of the 94 season and the start of the 94 playoffs with another wrist injury, suffered during a game against New Jersey. Now, he was really bothered by the flu. He had uh, another heavy flu uh, season in 95 and was out uh, pretty well by a month and also with nerve damage. Now, he missed parts of the 96 season with a sore hand and injury suffered during the Rangers October 11th game versus Winnipeg in 80 and 95. Another flu problem, another bruised foot, another strained groin. Now, 97, the injuries cropped up again. Strained neck, another bug with the flu, and then missed the remainder of the 97 season in one game in the playoffs with an inflamed tendon in the right ankle. Now, eventually became the first player to play a thousand games in Edmonton uniform when he achieved a mark during the Oilers January 21st, 97 game versus the Rangers. He was also Edmonton's nominee for the 97 Masters and Trophy. Now, he was also suspended three games during the 98 season and fined 1,000 for the NHL for high-sticking Gino Wojcik while sitting on the bench during Edmonton's October 13, 97 game in Vancouver. Now, uh, he only missed the playoffs once through his 19 season NHL career, which was with the Rangers in 93. And, uh, of course, you know what happened after that. Uh, he won a cup in 94. Now, Olympics, he won a gold medal as an assistant executive director in 2002. World Cup of Hockey, he participated in 2004 as an assistant executive director. Won a Canada Cup in 84 and won a bronze at the Worlds in 82. Now, NHL, non-NHL awards and honors. QMJHL Hall of Fame inducted 2003. And again, he was named Canadian Olympic Team Assistant Executive Director on November 8, 2000, which he held in 2002, and again was named Assistant Executive Director for the 2004 Canadian World Cup of Hockey Squad on November 4, 2003. Now, unfortunately, he missed 91 Canada Cup training camp with tendonitis in his right ankle. Now, he worked as a part-time radio broadcaster during off-seasons of his days in Edmonton and also wrote for the Edmonton uh, newspaper. He was also very active in charitable causes during his playing days in Edmonton, including work as honorary chairman of the Edmonton Christmas Bureau and the James Bell Sports Foundation. Now, Kevin, uh, he's the cousin of former minor leaguer uh, Mike Lowe, and his younger brother, brother of NHL trainer Ken Lowe. He's the husband of former Canadian Olympic skier Karen Percy, who won bronze medals in downhill at Super G races at Calgary in 88. Now, He's nicknamed Vish and Vicious during his early playing days because of his resemblance to Sex Pistols rock star Sid Vicious, not to be confused with Sid Justice or the wrestler. So. Now, talking about the trade, now Edmonton traded low to the Rangers in exchange for Roman Oxuda and a 93 third round pick, which ended up Alexander Kirsch on December 50, 92. At the time of the trade, the third round pick was listed as a future undisclosed draft pick and was contingent on Lowe signing with the Rangers. Four years later, Edmonton got Lowe back when the owner signed him as an unrestricted free agent on September 19, 96. So, considering uh, his career, 
Kevin, what you saw is what you get. Like, you would see him uh, uh, playing in a certain game. You think he was doing nothing. He was headbanging the puck. He was doing enough. When Edmonton uh, had Gretzky, Coffey, and Messi, and Anderson floating on the offense, Lowe was back on defense. He was worked uh, to, uh, like I said, work to defensemen. Now, the 13 full seasons he had with the Oilers in the first stint, uh, he was... Uh, uh, regarded as again one of the big the big three with Gretzky and Messier, like the triplets with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, during the owner's run to the Idiot Stanley Cup, he played with a broken wrist and a full cast, a potential like, explanation for his point totals in 19 games. Yet he did miss a single playoff uh, game. Now, on the night the owners won the cup. Gretzky informed the media that Lowe was also hiding broken ribs throughout the playoffs. He was working. Uh, the, the Stanley Cup Finals with broken ribs and a broken wrist. Shows you right there. Now, the Oilers traded when he traded him to the Rangers in 92. He won the Stanley Cup with six other Oilers. Glenn Anderson, Buka Boom, Graves, <coughs> Craig McTavish, Mark Messi, and Asa Tikkanen, bringing his third personal total to six. So technically the Rangers were the Edmonton, the Edmonton Rangers at the time. Now, in 96, he rejoined the Oilers as a free agent and played another full season. He started the 98 season with the Oilers as well, but only played seven games before he faced to retire, forced to retire, due to an injury or virus that affected his balance. Now, the uh, post-playing career as well, head coaching duties uh, with uh, uh, 99 taking over Ron Lowe, 32, 26, uh, 16, and 8. He got to the first round in the playoffs, but lost to Dallas 4-1. Now, in 2005, the Quebec Major uh, Junior Hockey League created the Kevin Lowe Trophy. The trophy Kevin Lowe awarded annually to a player in the queue, judged to be the best defensive defenseman. Now, uh, the, in the 2007 NHL offseason, this is where he also had a lot of... Uh, uh, interest amongst uh, the media. He offered contracts to restricted free agents Thomas Vanek, who was, which was matched by the Buffalo Sabres, then to Anaheim forward Dustin Penner, which, which was signed. Following the offer sheet to Penner, Brian Burke, the GM of the Ducks, publicly blamed Lowe for an inflation in player salaries, accusing Lowe of colossal stupidity. Then head coach Craig McTavish responded by referring Burke to the Wizard of Oz. You call me here, put a white shirt on, wheel him out of the front of the camera, and he'll say whatever you guys want. Lowe did not respond to Burke's attacks until uh, July 4, 2008, on a local radio show, Total Sports with Bob Stauffer, calling Burke a moron and a media junkie. So you can expect they're not, they're not uh, Christmas pen pals there. Now, Lowe's number four was not retired by the Oilers until 2021. He had been the only player in the Oilers' NHL history to wear number four until he issued the Taylor Hall, the Oilers' first overall draft pick in 2010. Chris Russell also wore number four for the Oilers as well until the beginning of the 2022 season. Now, in 2021, Lowe was appointed a board of directors for Play on Canada, and uh, Play on Canada, again, is the world's largest world hockey tournament, so he likes to work on the developmental uh, side as well. Now, uh, talking about, again, the father, uh, his uh, son, uh, Bakersfield Condors defenseman Keegan Lowe, drafted by the Hurricanes in the third round, 73rd overall in the 2011 NHL entry draft. And Lowe's oldest son is Canadian filmmaker Sean Shane Fennessy. And Kevin is also the uh, uncle of Melissa Lowe, a Canadian bobsleigh athlete. Now, Lowe was named to the, again the Hall of Fame in the class of 2020, and he's the first was the first uh, technically defensive defenseman named in the Hall since arguably Rod Langway in 2002, but uh, Langway was sometimes an offensive defenseman, sometimes defensive defenseman, but like I said, well-deserved. Now, on February 26, 2021, it's been a busy year for awards. He was named to the Order of Hockey in Canada by Hockey Canada in recognition of his career and contributions to the game in Canada. Now, you look at the raw stats. He never scored 10 goals in the season other than 81. Where, uh, but you look at these point totals. I want to talk about consistent. Right? From 1980 to uh, 1994, 
21, 34, 40, 40, 46, 25, 18, 37, 24, 25, 33, 16, 10, and uh, 15, and 94, he had 19 points. But like I said, besieged with injuries for most of his career, and he played injured for most of his career, no doubt. And for some reason, again, the, the flu bug really, really hurt him throughout the years. But it was interesting about uh, uh, his playoff totals. You you look at all the seasons he played. The majority of the uh, the playoff numbers, besides eighty four, was the stay at home thing: five assists, four points, two goals, three assists, whatever. And uh, but two hundred fourteen games. My God, making the playoffs every year. And don't forget those three years with Quebec, he made the playoffs as well. So from nineteen seventy seven to ninety eight, you know, over two decades of play, and he made he did make the playoffs. Just at one time. Now the, the raw by way team got the stats at the Worlds in '82 and a goal and assist in two game, two points in nine games. In '94 at the Canada Cup, he had four assists. So again, uh, uh, Olympic gold medalist, Canada Cup gold medalist, World Championship bronze. Again, a head coach, uh, GM, done everything in hockey. And like I said. Uh, not to be braggadocious, but he could have said, you know, I'm the greatest defensive defenseman of all time. And I can say that there's not many, many better, but there's as many just as consistent. But for for all those offensive uh, players that Edmonton had, you needed a Kevin Lowe. You couldn't have a behalf of Paul Coffey without Kevin Lowe because literally he was holding down the fort. And not scared to take a penalty, ladies and gentlemen. When he needed to, he had, uh, he had a toughness. And... You know, to see Kevin Lowe fight was a was a waste of time, and I tell you why. Kevin Lowe was not good with the fists, but he didn't need to fight. That's what Semenko was for and the other uh, key protectors of Edmonton. That's a new word of the week, by the way. Our good friend Alan Globinski, protector, and I tend to agree with Alan. Uh, he was never an enforcer, but he could be a protector at time, too, and he had to be. But I look at that 94 cup run with the, the Rangers in 94, those 22 games. Boys, he uh, like I said, stalwart. You couldn't you couldn't move him, and you couldn't you couldn't get him nervous. And you had to be icy steel because Edmonton had a lot of tough losses before he won that cup, especially the series against uh, L.A. And uh, it uh, it wasn't like I said, it wasn't easy for Edmonton to be a dynasty. It took players like Kevin Lowe to come in to make it work. And his only reason why he won all those cups it was because. They needed a good defensive defenseman, and that was Kevin Lowe. I don't know why the Hockey Hall of Fame didn't put him in before 2020. Anyway, that's for the missing time. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing with the Vintage Podcast, let us know with a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, if you're an Oilers fan, at one point, you had a chance to be the greatest dynasty of all time. But the, pro- the problem was, again, that 86 loss. That was just, you know, just a bummer. But Lee, you could have easily won five cups, easily, but, you know, Calgary was strong, Montreal was strong, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. You're the second greatest dynasty of all time, and you're headed to the Oilers, I headed to the Islanders, but not, not ahead of the Montreal of the late, uh, of the late 70s, because we had two Kevin Lowe's. Look it up. Have a good day. Bye.